Okay, let's look at number two from the homework assignment in chapter six. So in this problem, we are given the wavelength in 514 nanometers. And the first thing we wanna do is we wanna calculate the frequency. So I have an equation that's on my formula sheet and it's C, which is the speed of light, equals lambda, which is wavelength, times the symbol nu, which is the frequency. And I can use this equation whenever I'm converting back and forth between wavelength and frequency. I always have a habit of isolating what I want to solve for first. So in this equation, if I divide both sides by the wavelength, I can solve for just the frequency equal to the speed of light over lambda, which is the wavelength. And I can look up C right in my formula sheet. C is 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. So when I solve for the frequency, I'm gonna end up getting frequency in one over seconds or hertz, which is a unit of frequency. If I look at C, I want my wavelength to have units of meters so that it cancels out with the meters in C. So since they give me the original in nanometers, I'm going to take a moment and I'm going to convert my wavelength into meters. So essentially, whenever we're using C equals wavelength times frequency, I want to make sure that my wavelength is in meters and my frequency is in 1 over seconds or hertz. So I can look up the conversion between nanometers and meters. It's in your formula sheet as well. There's 10 to the 9 nanometers and 1 meter. Okay, nanometers cancels out. I can solve and I end up getting 5.14 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. So that's what I'm going to plug into my equation. 5.14 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. And now I can see that meters and meters cancel out. And I'm going to be left with the unit 1 over seconds, which is the unit of frequency. And in my calculator, if I solve for this, I get 5.84 times 10 to the 14, 1 over seconds, or seconds to the minus 1, or hertz. Those are all equivalent units. So that's my answer for A. Just as a note, if I'm doing this in my calculator, what might be helpful is to write this as 3e to the 8th, where I can get that e exponent by pressing the second button and the comma button divided by 5.14 e negative 7. Again, pressing the second button and the comma button. And that e stands for times 10 to the. By doing it this way, I am making sure my orders of operation is correct. If I don't do it this way, way in my calculator, just make sure that your denominator is put in parentheses. So let's look at the second part of the problem now. The second part wants us to find the energy in joules. I have another equation that relates the frequency and the energy. That equation is E equals H times the frequency, where E is the energy, H is Planck's constant, which you can look up in your equation sheet, and that symbol nu is frequency again. So I can solve for the energy by just plugging in Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds, and plugging in the frequency that I just found, 5.84 times 10 to the 14 seconds to the minus 1, or 1 over seconds, or hertz. I'll notice that seconds cancel out, and when I multiply this in my calculator, I get 3.87 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. It's implied that this is joules per photon. So whenever I'm using this energy equation, this is the joules that are emitted per photon that have that frequency. So if I look at C, I want to now get the energy in kilojoules per mole. So I have some conversion, conversions to do here. 
So just rewriting what I had for part B, I have my energy in joules per photon, and that's the unit that I always get when I plug into E equals Planck's constant times the frequency. So from here, it's just really dimensional analysis, just getting conversion factors to go from one unit to another. So let's look at the, the numerator first. The numerator is joules, so I can use a conversion factor to go between joules and kilojoules. I want joules in the denominator, so it cancels out. And I want kilojoules in the numerator so that that stays. And there are a thousand joules in one kilojoule. I now have the unit kilojoule per photon. But I don't want kilojoule per photon. I want kilojoule per mole. I know that in one mole of anything, there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd things. Okay, so a mole is really just a number. And it's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So I can relate that to photons as well. There are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd photons in one mole of photons. Okay, I want mole on the bottom so that it stays in the denominator. Photons will cancel out. So in my calculator, I'm just doing um, 3.87 times 10 to the negative 19. I'm multiplying it by Avogadro's number, and I'm dividing it by 1,000 and I should end up getting 233 kilojoules per mole, okay? So once I get my energy unit from E equals Planck's constant times the frequency, I'll come out with the unit joules per photon, and from there to get it into kilojoules per mole is just using dimensional analysis. So make sure you know those conversion factors.